so let's look at another task step. 3.3 was check for leaks. So what we've said when we did our initial analysis, after we start the transfer, the operator and or the driver should just look around the system, make sure there's no liquids dripping or even flowing out. Um, you know, what type of task step is it from our list? I think it's fairly obvious we're going to select check in this case. We'll then go to our potential error, errors from our checklist. And there's a number there that I think we can identify. So we'll complete the table like we did before, check for leaks. Let's think about omitting or delaying those checks. In other words, not making a check immediately after starting the transfer. If we delay that step and there is a leak, you know, we're not going to realise it for some time. The spill will be bigger, more material will end up being spilt, and there's a higher chance of escalation. If, for example, it was a flammable material, a higher chance of a fire. You know, we may say that the fact the operator and driver will be present means that uh, they will probably pick up a leak when it occurs. And we can say, well, with where the transfer takes place, any spills will be contained, so the actual consequences are reduced to a certain extent. We may well th think of some additional measures, though. For example, if we're doing this at night, the chances of seeing a leak might be reduced. Perhaps improved lighting would help there. Um, or, there, and again, there is technology. Uh, leak detection equipment is something you might want to consider. Another investment, another cost. But it, you may want to make that recommendation on the basis of your assessment. And once again, we've, we've covered two of the error types there. There were others, but we will probably conclude that we've pretty well covered um, the in important aspects of that task step. And we can move on to another one. We've looked at two steps so far where we've said, OK, that whilst different error types may occur, the, the consequences and the way we control the risks will essentially be the same. Let's just look at uh, this step from the task. Number four, disconnect tanker from delivery point. As before, we've identified a number of different error types. When we fill the table in this time, we put the task step in. We've got action omitted or incomplete, uh, essentially the same. The, if what we're saying there is the uh, hose that we use during the transfer is not properly disconnected. The consequence of that is damage to the hose, plant or tanker uh, when the tanker is driven away. Existing risk control measures, well, it would be the driver's responsibility. And we may say, well, it seems fairly unlikely that he's going to drive away uh, whilst the hose is still connected. That being the case, we might say, well, there's no additional measures to consider. But we had other error types. If we look at the action too early, disconnecting the hose while we're still transferring, we're going to get a release of material. There's still liquid passing through the hose, um, and that's likely to leak when we go and disconnect it. Existing risk control measure, well, we might say, yes, it's a possibility, but actually there's going to be noise, there might even be vibration. It seems fairly unlikely that uh, the operator will do that um, without realising that something's amiss. And so again, we might say, OK, in this case, there's no additional measures that we would consider. But there's even more error types that maybe we haven't covered yet. So we'll move further down the table, create another row. What about the action on the wrong object? So in this case, we've, we've finished our transfer. We go to disconnect the hose, but we actually disconnect the wrong hose, maybe one that's being used for a different transfer. Same consequence, um, that material is going to get released. Probably the same existing control measure that the operator may well notice that there's a noise or vibration. But it does prompt us to think, well, is there anything else we can do to avoid that? For example, improving the labelling of the connection points. We may say to ourselves, well, we might think it's unlikely, but equally when you look at the area, there's multiple connection points and they're not very well labelled. Maybe that's a way we can reduce the likelihood of that error taking place. In other cases, we may come to do our HEA and find that the information we've got about the task doesn't quite stack up. For example, number one on our task analysis was confirm the tanker is okay to offload. Okay, we can see that it's a check step, and but when we go through it, we might say, well, every type of check error can occur, and it starts us to wonder, well, what's this check there for? Is it to check the physical condition of the tanker? Is it to check the paperwork? the competency of the driver, the integrity of the hose that he's going to use. 
what this may prompt us to think is, well, maybe when we did our original analysis or wrote our original procedure, we didn't really go to the level of detail that we should have done. So what this tells us in this case is, well, probably when we did our original task analysis, we should have broken that step down into a greater level of detail. So HEA is a good um, check, really, to make sure that our task analyses or our procedures are going to the level of need detail that's really needed. Well, in the reality, you'll probably find that most task steps will either be actions or checks, but the the, uh, the prompt sheets do include some other types that I'm just going to quickly go through. One is selection. Uh, the step is a selection and there's two errors identified there. In this case it's where you get to a task and the person has to make a choice. Maybe they've got to select a tool, uh, select the correct route maybe for themselves to get from A to B or for the process. Or maybe select a mode of operation whether it be on a computer screen from a selector switch or some buttons. Well, there's planning. Uh, two types of failure identified. This is where someone may be performing a task and gets to a point where they have to decide how they're going to proceed. Maybe they've got to decide which part of the task they're going to carry out, maybe how long they're going to carry out that action, or maybe there's something about the operating conditions that they need to achieve for that task to proceed. We've got information retrieval. Um, that's where to p proceed in the task you need to gather some information maybe from another person, maybe from a document like a procedure or instruction or a computer or maybe actually go out and physically look at an item or uh, see what condition it's in. Last one, communication. This is the opposite really where you've got to pass on information either to another person directly, maybe make a phone call, use the radio, send an email or possibly enter information onto a computer system. Really finishing now with just a few words about practicalities. I said earlier on the best way of doing an HE8 is to have a group of people together who know the task um, and to get them all involved. Now I think what you really need is a balanced approach. For example, there are a lot of different types of error that may occur and it is quite easy to get bogged down with going through every error type and spending a lot of time on each. The reality is what we're looking for, what are the most significant errors uh, and focusing our efforts there. Uh, otherwise, it is a real danger you turn people off and they stop participating. When we're looking at the consequences, it, it is possible to say, well, there's always the, the, the pos possibility of a knock-on effect or escalation. Um, but you know, what we've got to concentrate on is the credible, credible events there. And just a sort of word that, yes, HA does tend to focus you on what people do wrong. And I think it's just worth remembering that people make a lot of positive contributions as well and uh, just to bear that in mind when you're going through the analysis and really you know the, the, the most important thing I would I can say is that it's much better to analyze a small number of tasks really well instead of trying to act, analyze a lot of tasks where you may well rush through um, and it becomes a bit of a tick box exercise I hope you found that useful and if you do want any inf more information please do get in touch by any of the means shown on the uh, on the screen there goodbye